there, welcome back to another Eye Care for Your Brain with board certified neuropsychologist, Dr. Karen Sullivan. We're gonna try to do a bite-sized brain health where I give you science-based brain health information and empowerment in under 10 minutes. Can I do it? Let's go. Today we're gonna to talk about normal brain aging. This is very important because we want to keep anxiety low about the aging brain and we want to empower on when you should genuinely worry and what to do about it. So we're gonna cover normal brain function and normal brain structure as we get older. So first thing I wanna say right out of the gate is many brain functions do not change at all with age. Older adults have extensive life experience that they can draw on, and they can often find connections between issues to solve problems more effectively than us younger people. Yes, I'm putting myself in the younger category. So focused attention remains the same, verbal comprehension remains the same, our judgment remains the same, our vocabulary actually increases, our knowledge increases, facts about the world, our wisdom. And one thing I'm really looking forward to is social cognition increases. So our ability to manage interpersonal relationships actually gets better. So all of that being said, what we want to acknowledge is that there are mild changes in brain function that do happen as we get older. And we wanna know what those are, like I said, so we don't wanna underreact, we don't wanna overreact. So the first thing I want you to think about with the aging brain is how our senses decline. So we know that eyesight gets worse as we get older, hearing gets worse as we get older. And especially with vision, we have a lot of normal age-related changes. Well, maybe not normal, but let's just say common. So we've got glaucoma, macular degeneration, cataracts, and when all of those things aren't optimally managed, and sometimes even when they are, they interfere with information getting into our brain. And when our brain is using a substandard signal to process information and make decisions about information, then the brain function is going to suffer. So the first thing you have to think about is what quality of information is the brain getting? Second thing is that our processing speed, specifically our ability to retrieve information rapidly, our recall, this is where most people get very, frustrated with normal aging. They know the word they want to say, they know the person's name, they know the face, but they just can't pull it out of their memory banks. We also see that people struggle with multitasking. So let's say years ago you could do the checkbook and listen to a television show. Now you might find the TV show is just too distracting. So you just have to make sure you funnel out all other distractions and you just focus on the task at hand. We also see that the ability to learn high load new cognitive information declines a little bit. Now remember, I keep emphasizing this word mild, and that's really the key word when we talk about what's normal in cognitive aging. So a good example might be your uh, remote control gets updated, you get a new laptop, and so just that time it takes to kind of wrap your head around new problems processes changes a little bit, you might need more repetition. So the key though, is that it doesn't tip over into impacting your independence or your everyday function. You don't consistently need other people to come in and compensate for the things that you can't do by yourself. When we see that change happening, that's when we do get a little bit concerned about the variety of dementias that exist. So dementia is not a normal part of aging. It is an umbrella term that refers to the loss of the ability to remember, think, or reason to the extent that it interferes with complex financial management, remembering medications or appointments, and or driving. So those are the lines in the sand. Once you see those things being consistently impacted, now we start to worry that once healthy brain cells are either struggling to function in and of themselves, or the connections between brain cells is being lost. Now, dementia is a clinical syndrome, like an umbrella term, and it's caused by different diseases in the brain. So we have 
a host of disease processes that cause dementia. Most commonly is a mixed dementia where we actually have more than one cause. And what falls under that category is Alzheimer's disease, vascular dementia, Lewy body dementia, Parkinson's disease dementia. Those are the most common. And then we've got dozens and dozens of rare dementias. We also have on the other side, a variety of medical conditions that mimic dementia. So we do have a category called pseudo dementia. That is when dementia, when, pardon me, when depression is really, really, really bad, people can start to look and act and think like they have dementia. We often see that there's medication effect, interactions, people taking over the counters that they don't realize are going to not complement their prescription medications. We see too much alcohol, thyroid issues, vitamin deficiencies, even something like a body infection, a UTI, poorly controlled diabetes can mimic dementia. And we also see variety of mental health issues. When stress can sometimes be so bad, people can actually retreat into themselves, become so socially isolated that they aren't getting any cognitive stimulation. And they can sometimes look and act a little bit confused like they have altered mental status. The reason we need to understand dementia so well is because we need to know when to push someone to get a proper evaluation. A proper evaluation of brain health is done by a board certified neuropsychologist, someone just like me who spends time getting to understand your concerns, somebody who knows you well. And what we're looking for is a change from baseline. We're looking for a pattern. We're looking for if that pattern affects your ability to be independent every day. We sometimes also like to get a picture of your brain, neuroimaging, and usually this is helpful as a rule out. Most dementias cannot be diagnosed by a standard MRI or a CT of the head. We often think of those things as telling me it's not a brain tumor. Uh, they never had a bleed. It's not a fall. It wasn't a stroke. We can tell the size of someone's brain, and it's important to know if there is atrophy that is more than we would expect for age. And we can tell the degree of small vessel disease. These two things are helpful, but they're not necessarily specific. So we do often often ask a physician to order neuroimaging, but it doesn't actually give us as much information as comprehensive standardized testing. This is really the gift that neuropsychology gives our patients because what we can do is very systematically test cognitive function and tease them apart and compare how are you doing to someone who is your exact peer, same age, same education, same handedness, and we come up with a percentile for how you're doing compared to where we think you should be for your age. We also can do some tests where we get to make predictions about how you would do on this test if you were aging perfectly normally. So we really have two very sophisticated ways of making a comparison to how you're doing right here, right now. Something that's very interesting about the brain is that there's not a one-to-one -one relationship between brain function and brain structure. So again, this is where oftentimes people overestimate the power of brain imaging to predict brain function. Function. So I have seen awful looking images of the brain where you just almost gasp because the brain is so atrophied or it looks so diseased in the blood vessels, but the person is fully independent and is operating fantastic. I've also seen pristine, beautiful, plump pictures of brains, and the person is in a nursing home and cannot function independently. So what is normal in terms of structural change in the brain is we do see a mild, again, remember that word mild, loss of brain volume. So just like our spine shrinks a little bit, just like our muscles shrink a little bit, the the brain is no different. It's a organic biological system, just like everything else. And so we do see that we lose some volume over time. We do see less chemical messengers in the brain. So we have a mild reduction in things like dopamine and serotonin and norepinephrine. We also see that we do get more inflammation. And this is probably the area that we have the most control over through diet, 
exercise, stress management, good sleep hygiene, and cognitive stimulation. And that's really what we talk about here at I Care for the Brain. What are all the different things that you can do that are free within your everyday life to, in a very evidence-based way, improve the quality of your brain health. So if you like that kind of thing, please join, subscribe, tell me what you like about this approach in the comments and tune in next time. Thanks so much, take care, bye. Mm -hmm.